today is our lesson of our lesson is Captain Naaman. Naaman was commander of the army of the kings of Aram. He was a highly regarded warrior, earning the respect of his commander in chief, the king. We suspect he was respected by his troops who reported by him. To him, he was generally a successful, strong, attractive man. But in spite of outward appearances, Naaman was deeply troubled. As strong as he was, he could not defeat an illness that, if left untreated, would eventually kill him, and that disease was leprosy. Now, Mrs. Naaman's maid told her mistress about a prophet in Samaria who was known to heal people of this disease. So having tried everything else, Naaman worked on a plan to get himself into the place where Elisha resided to see him. Elisha was a Samaritan. Now Samaria was and is a troubled place in Israel. Always a troublesome place for the leaders of the day. So Naaman had to arrange to enter Israel, a place he wasn't very welcome because his armies defeated theirs. And then enter Samaria, which was even more of a problem. So he got a letter of introduction from the king and he armed himself with all of his savings account and filled his luggage with several changes of clothing and proceeded to cross the border to see the king of Israel. Now, desperate situations require desperate actions, we're likely to say. Like me, when we have tried everything else, then we give all we can to what we hope will be the sure thing. Sometimes our prayer life is like that. When I have a conversation with a person who has a nagging problem, whether health or otherwise, they may talk to me about all the different things they have tried, the people they've visited, the doctors they've consulted, the medicines they have taken, all to no avail. But then I'm led to ask a simple question. Have you prayed about this? You know, the answer may be, well, no, I haven't, or not very well, or not consistently. Then, the renewed sense of asking God to intervene in this situation often brings a sense of healing. Why do we wait to invite God into our troubles until after we have tried everything else? Why not God invite God in the first place? We may be as well be guided into a happy solution. It's a mark of a man of integrity that he will deny his pride to get what he needs. Back in Naaman, we can assume that this trip was not very much to his liking. After all, he was responsible for the defeat and the surrender of Israel's army. Yet here he is, going into the enemy, to enemy territory to ask a favor based upon the recommendation of none other but one of his own prisoners. How often pride keeps us from going where we should go and asking for what we want, asking for what we need, and for what we ought. We like to think we can solve our own problems on our own, by our own wit and by our own strength. We've been taught to be self-reliant, and that's good to a point. But when we run out of personal options, we have to turn to others for help. This again reflects humility and integrity. And it may not be easy. Naaman was ashamed for going to the king of Israel, who we can assume was expecting an apology or a peace treaty. The whole trip must have been very, very difficult. But Naaman knew what he had to do, and he did it. Paul Anka and Frank Sinatra may have popularized the idea. I did it my way. But wisdom shows that my way may well not be the right way. Life is not all about us. I'm preaching to myself. This is a hard lesson for me. I like to march to the drummer I prefer. Doing so has often led me down the wrong street. 
Some of the biggest mistakes in my life were made because I remained independent of the advice and counsel of others. While some of the best decisions I made were after thought and prayer, and above all, the good support of close friends. This is one reason why the church is so important in my life. I'm mostly in the church for worship, but I have found the support of caring people helps me to make the right decisions. Now, I may get in trouble for saying this, but I can get away with it because of the side of the street I'm on. Women are way better at this than are we men. Way better. Women are easy in the company of others, are less likely to make one of those half-baked decisions that we tend, men tend to make. Women, women need men to help them to think courageously and to act independently. Yeah, that's true. But we men need the company of women to remind us to seek the company of others so that we can learn once again that hardest of lesson of all. It is not always about us. And once he got to Elisha, the prophet, Eber, Naaman was instructed to go jump in the Jordan River seven times. Well, Naaman had a fit. He might have said to himself, and he probably did, what a stupid instruction. Here I thought he would wave his hand over me and I would be fixed. Instead, I have to humiliate myself yet again by going into enemy territory and to jump in the Jordan River. What? Why the Jordan? What's wrong with the Columbia or the Willamette? Well, maybe not, but you get the idea. So once again, Naaman put away his pride, went into the Jordan, yes, another foreign nation, jumped in the Jordan River as was instructed seven times. We read that he was cured. Rushing back to Elisha. He pledged lifelong loyalty. So Naaman was cured of his leprosy, but perhaps more important, he was cured of his pride, of his desire to run his life entirely on his own terms. I am so like him. I'm likely to be resentful when somebody tells me what to do and tells me to do something I don't want to do. Like Naaman, I want to be in charge of my own life. And these are my prayers for you, good friends. When life goes into reverse, that you will pray first rather than last. That you will open your mind to the help and support and encouragement and, yes, advice of others. Admitting you don't know everything, they just might have a point. That you will recognize your utter dependence upon God. And then when God heals you, whether body, mind, spirit, or attitude, that you will return to the one who gave you healing and give thanks. Thanks be to God, the source of all wisdom and understanding, all peace and good, all health, healing, 